Hallelujah. Turn with me to Mark chapter 6. And I'm going to read the scripture in your hearing tonight. Very familiar scripture. And it says, Mark, I'm sorry, Mark chapter 6, verse 30, says, And the apostles gathered themselves together unto Jesus and told him all things, both what they had done and what they had taught. Now what you got to understand is Jesus sent the disciples out. The Bible said he sent them out and he told them don't carry a purse, don't carry a script, don't carry money, just go. <laughs> and I'm going with you. Amen. That's the first part of this chapter. And so this is after they have came back. And he said unto them, Come ye yourselves apart into a desert place, and rest a while, for there were many coming and going, and they had no leisure so much as to eat. Amen. Can I tell you tonight when it really gets to moving like it should? Amen. Oh, no, no, no. Come on. Hear what I'm saying. Yeah. When, when the Holy Ghost, when we allow him just to do what he wants to really do. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, right. When we get on board with him, it's going to be so busy, yes. you ain't even going to have time for lunch. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. It said they had no leisure so much as to eat. So they departed into a desert place by ship privately. But look at this. And the people saw them departing. And many knew him. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, Lord. When you get a lot of folks knowing you. And knowing what they really knew was the miraculous. Hallelujah. It wasn't, wasn't just that they knew Jesus. They knew what Jesus could do. Hallelujah. All right. So when the people saw him departing, and many, many knew him and ran afoot. Now he's in a boat. <laughs> he's sailing out across the, the, the place there, the lake, and he's coming to a different place, and he's going to dock this thing and try to get away, but they're running on foot. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thither out of all cities, not just one city, but all cities, and out went them and came together unto him. They outran the boat. Hallelujah. And Jesus, when he came out, saw much people. Now, this is how Jesus is, okay? And was moved with compassion toward them because they were as sheep, not having a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. And when the day was now far spent, everybody say far spent. Far spent. He had been there a while. You talk about a long-winded preacher, you ain't seen nothing. He preached all day. Amen. <laughs> And his disciples came unto him and said, This is a desert place. And now the time is far past. Send them away that they may go into the country around about into the villages and buy themselves bread, for they have nothing to eat. He answered and said unto them, Give ye them to eat. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Amen. Look what he's saying. It's your opportunity to see something happen. And they say unto him, carnal-minded things, shall we go and buy 200 penny worth of bread and give them to eat? You don't want us to run into hand to Walmart? Yeah. He said unto them, how many loaves have you? Go and see. And when they knew, they said, five. You've got five loaves. And how many? And two fishes. <laughs> Hallelujah. And you got a whole bunch of folks. And he commanded them, to make all sit down by companies upon the green grass. And they sat down in ranks by hundreds and by fifties. And when he had taken the five loaves and the two fishes, he looked up to heaven and blessed and break the loaves and gave them to his disciples to sit before them. And the two fishes divided he among them all. Hallelujah. Everybody say all. all. And they did all eat. Now, here's the clincher. And we're filled. My goodness. 
And they took up twelve baskets full of the fragments and of the fishes. And they that did eat of the loaves were about five thousand men. Now I've said this before. You know why they took up twelve baskets? Because there was twelve apostles that had just been out preaching the gospel, healing the sick. The Bible said they healed the sick. Amen. They, they cast out devils. And here they are. And, and they came back hungry. Amen. And so the crowd was hungry. The crowd was fed. And God said, let me show what I can do. And 12 baskets of fragments. Each, each one of the apostles had a basket they had to carry back with them when they went back to town. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo, is that powerful or what? God is good at teaching object lessons. Amen. And they took up well baskets full of fragments of the fish, fishes, and they did eat of the loaves were about 5,000 men. Hallelujah. Now you talk about stretching a lunch, that's stretching a lunch. Amen. But you know what? God can do anything. Hallelujah. Let's just ask him to help us right now. God, we need your help. Lord, I recognize the fact that I can do nothing without you, Lord. <laughs> My God, Lord, anoint tonight, God, for your glory. God, will give you all the praise and glory and honor for it in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give him a hand clap of praise. My Lord, I love you, Jesus. I glorify your name, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can be seated. I want to preach just for a little bit. From this thought, how hungry are you? <laughs> Hallelujah. How hungry are you? There's, if there's ever anything that a dictator fears. Now, there's been a lot of dictators in history over the years. Amen. A lot of men that have been ruthless in what they did. Amen. Probably one of the greatest stands out is Hitler. Amen. But mostly on the Jewish people. But I, I understand, and, and from reading after several of the dictators over the years, there's one thing that a dictator fears. And that's the people that he is the dictator over. And the one thing that he fears the most about those people is that if they begin to get hungry, Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, y'all hang on. We're going for a ride here in a minute. Because hungry people, oh, Lord, amen. You know, it's important to keep them fed. Amen. Hallelujah. It, 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 even if you're only giving them just a minute amount, amen, just to keep them satisfied, Amen. The dictators of the world realized uh, that the one thing they have to do is somehow keep the masses fed. Just if, if it's barely enough to even subside uh, or subsist. Amen. Uh, if, if they can keep them fed. Hallelujah. Amen. Because hungry people go crazy. Amen. Hallelujah. Hungry people, Brother West, do anything for a meal. Amen. Uh, I, I was at a, at a service station here several years ago. I was working at the Lowe's on the north end. My son knows this guy. He, he's dealt with him before a couple times. And Sister Holly knows him. He used to come into the, the, the uh, Walmart up there all the time. And, and, and so I, I had just, it was the first time I had met Bob. And, and so I'm, I'm up here at, at the, uh, the all subs that morning. I had took my little lunch break and... I went over to Allsup's to get me a drink and get a little gas in the vehicle, and so I pulled up there by the pump, and, and I'm looking, and I'm watching as this guy walks up, and he begins to dig in the trash can for the West, and I thought, well, maybe he's just getting some cans out or something, because a lot of folks collect cans, and so he's digging through this trash can. And all of a sudden he comes out and it looks like a prize to him. Amen. He raises it up and looks at it in the sunlight. It's a little bag of beef jerky. 
It's been opened and some of it's gone, but there are four or five strips of beef jerky in there. And I stood there and I watched as this hungry man pulled a strip out and he turned it over and turned it over to make sure there wasn't any mold or anything on there that shouldn't be on there. And then he put it back in the bag and he pulled the next strip out until he went through all four or five strips that were in the bag. And then I watched as he rolled the bag up and he put it in his pocket. And the Holy Ghost smote me that day. And the Lord told me, and I went into the store and I got my drink. And while I was in there, the Lord said, get him something to eat. And so I bought him a meal and I carried it out there to him. And you ought to have seen his face light up. Amen. Oh, Bob, he looked at me and he grinned. And he said, thank you so much. He was very kind, a very generous man. Amen. Very gentle guy. But the thing about it was, he was a hungry man. Amen. I, I, the reason he was digging in that barrel was not to get aluminum cans. It was because he was having hunger pains. It was because something was driving him and something was pushing him to go beyond the natural normal thing. Hallelujah. Oh, if I could get us to understand here tonight, amen, that we need to have a hunger for the miraculous. We need to have a hunger for the powerful things that God wants to do in our lives. He wants to use you. He wants to work through you. Amen. But the reason he can't simply is because of the fact you haven't got hungry enough yet for the move of God that he wants to have here. Hallelujah. Amen. You, you understand what I'm saying tonight. Amen. When, when you get hungry enough, you will do whatever it takes, hallelujah, to get yourself satisfied. Oh, Bob, what are you doing in the trash can? Almost head first up inside there. I'm trying to find something, amen, that will appease the hunger. Oh, hear me tonight. I'm praying for this church body that there will be a hunger that grips us, amen, for something besides ordinary church, amen, that there will be a hunger that gets a hold of your heart and your soul and it drives you to go beyond the norm. Hallelujah. There's 5,000 men, and I don't know how many women children, they don't even add them up. It just says men. Amen. And the Bible said that they came from several cities. Amen. And, and the thing was, they knew Jesus, who he was. Hey, uh, come on, hear me tonight. Amen. There is a knowledge in this house of who Jesus is in your life. Amen. I, I don't have to stand up here and tell most of you who Jesus is. Amen. You've experienced him for yourselves. You've got his spirit on the inside of you. You know what it feels like. Amen. When the Holy Ghost comes on you, you know what it feels like. When the Spirit begins to drive you, amen, to pray, hallelujah, you understand what it's all about when the Spirit speaks to you to push the plate back, hallelujah. Amen. So I'm not talking to people that are novices. I'm not talking to people that haven't experienced things of God. You know... People are always saying, man, I wish God would do the miracles he used to do. Well, he just did. He filled you with the Holy Ghost. Hello. Amen. He brought you out of a life of sin and degradation. Right. Put his spirit in you. Hallelujah. Change the way you walk. Change the way you talk. Hey, oh, hear me. He changed what you drink. Amen. He took away the cigarettes. What did he do for you? He got you out of the bar room and into the church pew. Hallelujah. Oh, he's already done the greatest miracle he can ever do. But can I tell you tonight, amen, that God is looking for some hungry folks. Hallelujah. He's looking for somebody who will say, you know, I don't care how you go, Lord. I'm going to get there. I'm going to go the distance with you. It may take me a little longer to get there. But hear me tonight. Amen. The Bible said these people actually outran the boat that Jesus was in. They were so excited about getting into his presence. You know, we, if church has become mundane to you, if church is no longer something that you look forward to, oh Lord, 
if it's become your lot that when it gets close to church time, you think to yourself, oh man, it's already five o'clock. In about 10 more minutes, I need to go to church. I guess I gotta go tonight. If I don't, the pastor will be calling chicken on me. You got it right, he will. But can I tell you, amen, it's time that you love the things of God enough, amen, that you will outrun anybody to get in his presence, hallelujah. Oh, come on, hear me. You'll outrun anybody to get in the presence of God because I've got a hunger on the inside of me that's saying I just can't get enough of oh, Him. Hallelujah. I want to continually reach out for more. You hear me tonight? Amen. We want the excitement. We want the power. We want everything that goes with the miraculous. But God is looking for somebody who will just fall in love with Him enough to be here. Hallelujah. He's saying, first of all, before we get to the miraculous part, I just got to have you fall in love enough with me that you outrun me. <laughs> Woo! That you want to get to the church where you can be in my presence. Hallelujah. That you want to get to prayer meeting where you can be in my presence. Hallelujah. That you want to just find a place at home and visit with him. That you can be in my presence. Hallelujah. How hungry are you? How hungry are you? Hallelujah. These people were so hungry. Amen. That they outran him. Yeah. Ooh. Hallelujah. You, you understand the part I read about the hunger of the, of the food. Amen. They were hungry for food. No, 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 no. That was a hunger that was there. Amen. They did not go expecting to receive a fish dinner. Amen. Oh, hear me. Where, where, where do you? Oh, come on. Hear me. Amen. The church world has got it that they have to have potlucks on Wednesday night to attract the crowd. Can I tell somebody here tonight? Amen. That the potluck in the spirit is by far excessive. Amen to what we can provide for your stomach's sake. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo. So, so they outran him. It wasn't because they were looking for a fish dinner. Amen. Who no. It was they wanted to be in his presence. Hallelujah. There may have been some, amen, that had just got there, Brother Jimmy, that all they were doing was just going, amen, to get their healing. Maybe there were some that were going there because he had done something for them and they just wanted to see him again. But there were many of them, amen, who were going just so they could be near him and be in his presence. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, hear me. They were hungry. They had a, oh, hear me tonight. They had a hunger to the master. Hey. Hey. Woo. Jesus. Hallelujah. Second Kings chapter 7. Then Elisha said, Hear you the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. You've got to understand Samaria is under siege. Amen. They have been surrounded. They're under siege. They're starving them to death. Amen. They're starving them out. But they understand, amen, that if they don't have if they go outside the city, the Syrians will capture them as they go out and will kill them. Amen. So nobody wants to leave the city. They'd rather sit right there and starve to death. Oh, hear me today. Hallelujah. Amen. It got so bad that they were fighting over the horses that were remaining. Amen. Because somebody wanted to kill one of the horses and eat it. Oh, hear me tonight. Amen. Hunger will drive you to places you never wanted to go before. Oh, but let me tell you something. When you get a hunger for the things of God. So then a Lord on whose hand the king leaned, always oh, got one of these in every congregation, answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be? <laughs> and he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, 
but shall not eat thereof. You ain't hungry enough to believe it's going to happen. Let me say that again. You ain't hungry enough to understand that when the word of God comes forth, hallelujah, from the prophet, that is yea, amen. amen. Ooh. Oh, Lord, I'm talking to some folks here tonight that the prophet has stood before you in this pulpit. Amen. We've had several of them that have stood in this, pul this pulpit. Amen. They've given you a word from God. How it's about time that you got a grip, Peter Chip. Amen. It's about time that you grab a hold of that word that has been given to you. And you tell God, God, this was your word that was given to your man. Oh, everybody else is getting theirs. I'm going to hang on until mine comes through. Because God, I know that your words are yea and amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to believe it. I've got a hunger for the things of God to happen in my world. I don't care what the naysayers say. But he got a spot for them anyway. Hello. You might see it, but you ain't going to get none of it. Hallelujah. You know, it's kind of like the Lord's Thumbing his nose at him. You'll see it. It ain't gonna be none of yours. Hallelujah. I don't want him saying that to me. I want everything I can get. Hallelujah. All right, look at this. Now there were four leprous men at the entering of the gate. And they said one to another, Why sit we here until we die? Hmm. Now they're starving to death inside the city. Now these guys have been cast out long before the Syrians got there. Yeah. Syrians don't want to mess with them because they're lepers. They were afraid of them like the people in the city were. Even they were afraid if they touched them, they'd get leprosy, so they ain't gonna mess with them. <laughs> Hallelujah. So they just left them alone, they're gonna die anyway. Just leave them alone, let them die. Amen. Now, now these guys already have a death sentence on them. <laughs> yes, so it really doesn't matter what's going on in the city to them. Right. Right. Hallelujah. Right. Because they're not in the city. <laughs> Hallelujah. Right. Now they really have an advantage over the people in the city because they go out and hunt a rabbit if they want to. Right. Amen. But they didn't do it. Why sit we here until we die? Now listen, this is faith at work. If we say we will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city. We ain't going in there. Them people starving to death. They ain't got nothing to give us. So we ain't going to do no good going in. And we shall die there. And if we sit still here, if we keep sitting here doing nothing, did you catch that? If we keep sitting here doing nothing, we're going to die anyway. <laughs> now, come on, guys. He's Texas version. Let us fall under the host of the Syrians. Let's go see what they got. Lord only knows it can't be no worse than it is sitting here dying. We're dying from leprosy. It's going to be a slow death. It's going to last a while. I might lose a, a toe. I might lose a finger, I might lose an eyeball or an ear, uh, and it'll be months before I finally get to the point where infection has got a hold of my body and I finally die. If, if I go to the camp of the Syrians, at least I have a chance. Amen. Maybe, you know, they don't like us because we're lepers and they're afraid of us. So maybe when we go to the camp of the Syrians, uh, somebody will feel sorry for us and leave some food on the outside to get us away from their tent. <laughs> You know, you know how your brain works. Uh -huh. <laughs> but there's one thing for sure. If we don't do anything, we're going to die. Right. Right. If we sit here, we die. Uh -huh. If we go in there, we die. If we go to the camp of the Syrians, we might die. So really, we got a really good outlook on life, I see. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> 
So you need to make up your mind. Hallelujah. And one out of three options ain't bad. Hallelujah. So let's just go to the camp of the Syrians and let's see what happens. If they save us alive, we shall live. <laughs> but look at this statement. But if they kill us, we shall but die. <laughs> this is what I call desperate faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. They've got to the point of desperation. But the, the, the point I want to make out of this story is, uh, Brother West, they didn't just keep sitting there doing nothing. All right, right, right. Hallelujah. Uh, can I tell somebody here tonight, uh, when you get hungry enough, uh, you will move out of square one. When you get hungry enough, uh, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost here. When you get hungry enough, uh, you're going to quit sitting by the gate uh, considering all the bad options. When you get hungry enough, you're going to step out of the box. When you get hungry enough, you're going to step out in the thin air and say, God, I don't know what's about to become of this, but I'm going to take the first step. And he said, if you'll take one, he'll take two. Hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. I don't know what you're feeling tonight, but I'm telling you, I'm feeling in my Holy Ghost that some folks are starting to get hungry around this place. Come on, I'm tired of being the way I've been all my life. I, oh, hear me. I'm tired of the world looking at me and saying, you know what? You're stupid. You're crazy. You're not about to nothing. No, no, no. I'm stepping out of my box spiritually. I'm going to where the Spirit is moving me. Hallelujah. Now in the text, hunger was what got Jesus' attention. Ooh. He, 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 uh, let me show you what he did first. He saw the spiritual hunger before he saw the physical hunger. That's why he spent all day long feeding them. Because he said they're like a sheep without a shepherd. Woo! Hallelujah. So I'm going to feed them everything I can. Can I tell somebody here tonight that the Holy Ghost is wanting to feed you more than what you're getting? Amen. But you've got to be hungry. Oh, hear me. You've got to become hungry enough to begin to pursue Jesus. I hear me. You've got to become hungry enough to begin to pursue Him. And the more you pursue Him, the more of Him you'll find. Hallelujah. Lord, have mercy. My God. Woo, Jesus. So hunger is what got Jesus' attention. Notice. The miracles of the bread and fishes didn't happen until they got really hungry. Hello, anybody out there? Hey Amen. The miracles didn't start happening until the people got hungry enough. That's right. Amen. Woo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But, but, but did you see? I don't see anywhere in that text where one single person said, Boy, I sure am hungry. I wish you'd feed us. Come on. Did you see that? No. Did, I read it again. You need me to. I didn't read it anywhere in there. Amen. The first ones that mentioned it were the disciples. Amen. None of the 5,000 said, I'm hungry. Well, I sure wish you'd feed us. Amen. We know you can do miracles because we've seen it. So come on around with them miracles here. No, 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 no. 
You know what? They were so engrossed in just being in his presence. Hallelujah. Come on, we need to get to the place where we don't have to have anything going on, but we just can sit and bask in his presence and understand, amen, that he's feeding us. He's doing the miraculous in us, even as we sit and wait on him. Hallelujah. Now, we go a little further. They was hungry. Miracles happened because they were hungry. But they weren't hungry just for fish and bread. They were hungry for the things of God, for the supernatural. How do you know that? Because they came out of several cities around there. Guess what? He had just got through doing miracles in several cities around there. And so they were hungry enough for the supernatural that they came out into a desert place and were willing to stay there all day long without food or water. Amen. Just to get close to him. Oh, come on, hear me. What a fast. Can I tell some of us here tonight? Amen. God wants us to come to the place where we don't have no food and water for a day or two. Amen. Just so we can get a little closer to him and get a little more from his presence. The people followed him because they knew him. They had experienced him. Luke chapter 4. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being 40 days tempted of the devil. Man, most of us can't stand two days. Oh. Oh God. Reminds me of that little sister years ago. It's a true story. Years ago, my dad used to tell the story. He knew the church. He knew the pastor. He knew the sister. <laughs> the little sister stood up in church one night. We used to have what they call testimony services back in the day. And people would stand up and say, Praise the Lord, he's healed my body this week. Praise the Lord, I got a new job. You know? This little sister stands up and says, Well, the devil's been after me all day long, bless his holy name. I mean, you got to put a comma and a period in there somewhere, but she didn't. <laughs> so, we squawk when the devil's been after us a day. Jesus has been tempted for 40 stinking days. Hallelujah. 40 days he's tempted by the devil. Lord, if one of y'all was to get 40 days worth of temptation, my phone would be ringing off the wall every day. I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, God, he's after me all day long. He's just going to let up. Well, hello. If he lets up, you probably need some prayer help. Because if he lets up, you probably backslid. The devil only bothers the people that are of importance to God. That's why you never hear a guy sitting in the ballroom going, man, the devil been after me all day. I'm up here drinking because the devil been after me all day long. He's been messing with my brain. No, you don't hear that in the ballroom. Hello. So, and in those days he did eat nothing, and when they were ended, he afterward hungered. Now, this is Jesus. He was hungry. Mm. And the devil said unto him, if thou be the son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. And Jesus answered, said, it's written, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And the devil taking him up into a high mountain and showed him all the kingdom of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, all this power will I give thee in the glory of him, for that is delivered unto me, to whomsoever will I give it. If thou therefore will worship me, all shall be thine. And Jesus answered and said unto him, get thee behind me, Satan, you jerk. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And he brought him to Jerusalem, and he set him on the pinnacle of the temple. Now Jesus is doing all this while he's sitting in the desert. You know that, right? Yeah. Amen. And said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, 
cast thyself down from hence. For it is written. Now the devil knows how to use God's language. What's he doing? For it is written. Hello. He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee and in their hands. They shall bear thee up lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. Jesus answered and said unto him, It is said thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. When the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. Notice this. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him through all the region around about, and he taught their synagogues, being glorified of all. He came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he stood in the synagogue on the Sabbath day, stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He had sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach the deliverance of the captives, to come inside to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Notice, there was a hunger in Jesus. This is the flesh we're talking about, okay? But he was hungering for the full authority of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. He was on a 40-day fast. You know what he was seeking? He was seeking the full authority that belonged to him. Amen. All that spirit was in his body. Hallelujah. But he was making sure, amen, that he had that spiritual authority. There was a hunger there. Amen. For the things that was powerful. Amen. The things that he would be able to use to reach the world and to make sure that the ultimate sacrifice was paid. Amen when he hung on Calvary. But can I tell us here tonight, amen, he was tempted in all the points that we're tempted like him. And I said this morning, without sin, amen, can I tell somebody here tonight, amen, that we're looking at a God who loves us. We're searching for a God, amen, who is all powerful and he wants to fill us with that power and give us that authority in the Holy Ghost. But there's got to be a hunger first. Amen. The Bible said 40 days of fasting. Amen. Temptation. All these 40 days that they've been whacking on him. I understand he's just whacking on the body and on the, mind, on the brain. Amen. He ain't messing with the spirit because he can't. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> When you understand who you are, you have his spirit in you. What did I just say? He whacked on Jesus' brain, but he couldn't touch the spirit. That's right. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. So what are you saying, Brother Driscoll? What I'm saying is you need to be filled with the spirit. Right. We need to get to the point like Jesus. Amen. There's a hunger. Hallelujah. Oh, there's a hunger for the greater things. And we're not going to stop. We're going to pursue it until it begins to happen in our world. How hungry are you? Jesus had hunger. But the, the most important point I want to bring out, he didn't compromise. You know, the devil can make stuff look so good to you. My wife and I stopped by that ICU unit that evening to pray for that young man, only to find out he was a Satanist high priest. You know what he told me later in conversation? My backslid apostolic. I used to have what you got. Wow. So how did you get from point A to point Z? Because you ain't a B. You're on the opposite end of the spectrum from God. How did you get from here to there? You know what I think happened? 
and I see this over and over and over again. People lose their hunger. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. yes, sir. You can stay hungry. Oh, hear what I'm saying. I, I've never been to Africa. I was talking to a preacher today, actually. And, and this preacher was telling me he just got back from Haiti. And, and, and he had tears in his eyes when he was telling me. He said, do you know... He said, that, that really got to me. He said, I have never seen such poverty in my life. He said, it was so bad there. And I told him, I said, we went down to southern Mexico. And we went up into the mountains. And we went to Indian tribes. They haven't been taught how to raise crops. <laughs> Nobody has taught them anything about how to hunt. Nobody's taught them how to fish. Hunger has driven them to what they are. Now you can do like the people in Haiti and sit there and feel sorry for yourself and not be willing to get out and try something new. Amen. Try to raise your crop in your backyard. Amen. Amen. I got a, I got a brother-in-law down in Houston. He's a city dude. He don't know no better. He, he went and bought some railroad tries, Brother Williams. And he built this bed 16 foot long. It's two tip, two two railroad ties long and one railroad tie across. And he built it two railroad ties high. And then he called around by the West until he found somebody that could bring him in some topsoil. And he filled that bed up with topsoil. And this city dude who don't know no better, every year in his backyard raises a garden that feeds his family for the whole year. In a two railroad tie long by one railroad tie wide box. <laughs> I, I, I was amazed when I went out. He figured this stuff out by himself. I guess he, he, he got some, some magazine somewhere or something. <laughs> but he had corn planted all down the backside, up the sides, and down the front. And Right between every stalk of corn were beans planted. Now the beans needed something to run on. So as the corn got taller, the beans crawled up them. <laughs> Hallelujah. So about the time the corn's coming in, he's starting to pick beans off the corn cobs. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. I bet you never heard anybody get beans and corn off the same stalk before. But he's doing it. And then on the outer edge of that, he had tomato plants growing. And he had his bell peppers. And he had everything right there. You, you understand what drives a person to do that is hunger. Hallelujah. Amen. The reason some countries are starving to death is because people have got hungry, but they've allowed the hunger to overtake them to such a degree that they finally get hopeless. And they say, you know what? I'll never amount to anything. It looks like I'm destined to starve to death. And they'll die never having known how to fish or how to plant crops or do anything. Whole civilizations have died because nobody wanted to make the effort. They were hungry. They were hungry. But they never went forward. They sat there like the leprous men said, we can sit here till we die. No, 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 no. I want my hunger to drive me. Ooh, hallelujah. Amen, Brother West. My hunger should drive me. Amen. I, I, I shouldn't hell back. I shouldn't sit down and say, God, if you can, you want to bless me, you can do that. And if you like to, I'll be sitting here waiting on you. Our 
you can drive towards, oh, hear me, getting into his presence. You can run towards him, amen, and say, you know what? I'm in the house of God. I'm in his presence. I refuse to sit back and die. I'm going to make something out of this second. I'm going to move forward in the Holy Ghost. I'm going to find him in the walk he wants me to find him in. How hungry are you? You know, Thanksgiving's coming up. Amen. Always my favorite time of year. I love Thanksgiving. And we, we give thanks to God. Amen for his blessings. Amen. But we like to make a meal. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The kids are all coming over. And we, we're going to make a meal. Hallelujah. Amen, brother. I can... I can make some of the best jalapeno peppers you ever saw. Amen. You heard Brother Andrew testify. Amen. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Take them babies and slice them and get all the seeds out of them. Fill them full of cream cheese. Put that little smoky sausage in there and wrap bacon around that dude. Stick it in the oven and let it cook till it's done. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, I have trouble keeping them on the plate. They don't last long. Amen. I ain't even asking what they want for Thanksgiving this year. Amen. Sometimes it'll be brisket. Sometimes it'll be turkey. Sometimes it's, it's, it's uh, baked turkey. Sometimes it's smoked turkey. Amen. Sometimes it's, it's one of them kind that you cook in that little cooker thing, that fried turkey. Amen. Whatever they want. I let them make the menu up. Sometimes we got a mixed bag. Amen. Hallelujah. One year we had brisket. Amen. And we had tamales. Hallelujah. We had enchiladas. We weren't talking about Thanksgiving dinner. We had turkey. Hallelujah. We had spinach dip or spinach, cream spinach. And I make good stuff. Amen. And we had cakes and pies. Hallelujah. What was going on once? I got on the phone. You know, my wife and I got on the phone. And we said, okay, we want you guys to tell us what you want us to fix for Thanksgiving this year. <coughs> one said, enchiladas. Woo, Mexican food. The other one said, I, I, want a, I, want a, I want a turkey. Can you do a smoked turkey? Yeah, I'm going to do a smoked turkey. Somebody else said, you know, we ain't had any brisket in a long time. Can you make a brisket? Do you know what was driving them? Hunger. Yeah. Woo. And when we have Thanksgiving dinner, we have a feast. Amen. We, we don't spare it. I just tell them, whatever you want, let's get it. Let's do it. Hallelujah. Amen. Because there's a hunger there. Now that's as carnal as carnal gets. Amen. But can I tell you that God is saying, what will it be? What do you really want? Come on. I I'm willing if you're hungry. Hallelujah. Woo. Do you understand tonight, amen, that he's got a smorgasbord in the spirit? And he's telling us, whatever you want, amen, you just let me know what you want. I've got it, and I'm willing to share it. But there's got to be a hunger here enough to reach out for it. I wouldn't do very well at fixing Thanksgiving dinner if I fixed all that stuff. And he came over and looked at it and said, you know, that really doesn't look as good as I thought it was going to look. Or they all walked in and go, well, we ate a late breakfast. I'm not hungry. I wouldn't be so excited about fixing it. My wife and I would probably just go to bed and take a nap. Hallelujah. At our age. <clears throat> Been missing too many of them 3 o'clock eating the naps anyway. Amen. But what drives us is their hunger. You hear what I said? 
what drives us to fix that big Thanksgiving dinner is their hunger. Ooh. Can I tell you tonight, amen, that what drives God to bring the miraculous into the house is a hunger for the things of God like you've never experienced before. Hallelujah. Come on, you let yourself get hungry enough in the spirit. You'll begin to seek him. You'll begin to say, God, here's what I want on my plate spiritually. When you fill it up, I'm hungry. Finally, Bible said, he that hungers and thirsts after righteousness. Shall go hungry? Shall be kind of sort of feel? Yeah. We'll be served appetizers. I, I never have understood what they call them appetizers. They kill your appetite when you eat them. By the time your food gets there, you're not hungry anymore. But, 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 do I have an understanding tonight? Amen. <laughs> Church, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. <laughs> I'm not going to go digging any spiritual garbage cans. But can I tell you, I serve a God who said, I've got it all laid out. I'm just waiting on hungry people to step up to the table. Oh, hear me tonight, church. Amen. God has got some things open for this church. Amen. Different people in this church have got prophecies on them. All we're doing is waiting on God. Amen. No, no, no. All that's happening is, is He's waiting on you to get hungry enough. Amen. To seek after it. And the moment you begin to pursue it, it's the moment you'll find it. You want to be used by God? Anybody? Amen. Get hungry. Yes, Amen. Get hungry. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I wish God would use me. Don't send interpretation. Get hungry. Oh, I, God, I would like to be used in like an angel to seek and watch. Well, duh, hello. You supposed to got that when you got the Holy Ghost. Lay hands on see they shall recover. That's what follows believers. If you're a believer, that's part of what comes with it. Hallelujah. Hey Amen. You don't buy a car and then have to buy a separate steering wheel separate. Right. Hello? Oh, I like this car. I just bought this new car, but I can't drive it. Why not? Well, I couldn't afford the steering wheel. Hello? People look at you like you just fell out of a tree or something. Probably you did. Amen. Probably banged your head pretty hard because all cars come with steering wheels. Unless you go to the junkyard and buy them. Amen. Hallelujah. But do I understand tonight that the things of the Spirit are already laid out for me? It's just you got to get hungry. Anybody hungry tonight? Yeah. Let's stand right now. Let's just ask the Lord. God, I'm hungry. Come on, just talk to Him right now. I'm hungry, God. Lord,